Number, <clears throat> question number two states, name the three types of formal organizations and explain how each is different. Also, explain a time when you were involved in one of these organizations and the positive and negatives it had within it. So, part number one, three types of formal organizations. The first one being uh, the voluntary organization where members can enter and leave freely. Um, think of this as volunteer, well, voluntary. Um, think of these as like uh, hiking groups, social groups, uh, community service groups. Um, one of the big kind of things around here gets promoted on the radio enough at least um, is this singles group called Events and Adventures where instead of just going to the bar and trying to talk to somebody, they actually plan trips out and, you know, as long as you're a part of the group, you can join along and go do all these different things and hopefully mingle with people. And it's just something you can enter into Try it once, find out you have stage fright, um, or you can continue all through the rest of your life, or, you know, as most hopefully would, withdraw the second they meet somebody worth settling down with. But that's that enter and leave whenever you want part. Um, the coercive organization, which is something entered against their will. Um, examples would be the mental hospital prison or drafted into the military. Um, that last one's important to, you know, pay attention to the verbiage. Uh, being in the military nowadays is uh, totally voluntary and nobody can coerce you into it. And even in my day, I, I was in from 04 to 2011 and the very end of 2004, 2005, Judges across America tried to get out of the um, go to prison or go to jail thing, and which can be the, the coercive factor. But this example is focused on drafting, like in Vietnam, go to go to jail or go to war, and that's you didn't have a choice. Um, now the third one being utilitarian. This would be more of like my style of military. Um, utilitarian is joined to accomplish, a, you know, a purpose or, um, a vital everyday task. There are numerous things, school, work, um, co-ops in, you know, I moved from central Illinois, so uh, a lot of farmers and co-ops ran all around because buying in bulk is a lot cheaper and, if you have 10 small farms, that, but they can put in an order the size of one big one, they can be competitive on a larger scale. Um, government bureaus and agencies. Um, so this one is a little, you know, combination of both. It's not voluntary, but it's also not coercive. Meaning when you, okay, school is a great example. Um, I enrolled here at Aspen. I was, uh, you know, accepted in and have been committed to doing my absolute best. If at any point during this course, I just decide I don't want to do it anymore, I can obviously leave. That's never going to stop. You know, nothing will stop me from leaving. However, I can't just pop back in. It can't be like, uh, you know, a hiking club where I'm like, I'm going to take a month off and come right back. I'd be starting over. Um, same with work. You know, you can't come and go as you please if you, you know, uh, again, this is uh, it's an ethical kind of thing. If you wanna, if you wanna get the paycheck, take care of your family, you're going to be at work. So you are coercing yourself, if you will. Um, and then, obviously, a an example of when I was in one was the utilitarian, and that was the military. It had its goods and its bads. Um, I don't know, I've been out of it for a while, so I sort of romanticize it a little bit. You know, I see a lot more of the goods now than I did back then, and forgotten some of the bads. Um, with the current state of America, with racial divide just rampant, being fueled by 
all these different media outlets with their own personal opinion on everything. Um, the one thing I can say is you don't see color in the military. Some might, but not many. Um, our, our units were this long range reconnaissance, airborne scout sniper. We did extremely challenging, tough missions, and you had to be able to count on the guy next to you. He's your brother. And you, the last thing you're thinking about is, is race or, you know, if you like dudes, you know, because that was still illegal back then. But, uh, I mean, nobody cared about any of that stuff. As long as they were there, they had your back, you had his. Um, and obviously the beds, pay was lousy. Um, you know, I couldn't leave. Uh, being on in an airborne unit, we were on Red Con, so we always had to be on alert to deploy worldwide it's 24 hours, so we only got to take vacation two specific weeks a year, and that was about it, um, and then obviously the toll that it takes overseas, you know, we had, my unit lost 53 the first round, and uh, so I did two tours, and you know, you're watching your best friends go, and and, uh, you know, you get, I got hurt. My body is not what it used to be. And, um, yeah, it uh, kind of destroys you mentally. It took me a long while to come back to where I am now. You know, it wasn't even, you see stuff on TV, people hear a car backfire, diving under pillows, and that's not it at all. It can be rapid, you know, massive amounts of depression and, you know, Feelings of inadequacy, and, you know, no direction in your life. And at, you know, when you watch your friends die and you're in combat at 19, it really messes you up early. So that's, uh, that's definitely, that was a bad, bad part. But it gave me so much more good stuff. And now that I'm pretty confident to say I'm pretty not over it but you know it's in my rearview mirror still see it but it's way back there it's uh everything's looking a lot better